Hello everyone, welcome to this video where we will try to understand the basic concepts of confidence interval and confidence level. Confidence interval is a range of values that is likely to contain an unknown population parameter and confidence level is the percentage of the confidence intervals that contains the population parameter. A 95% confidence level is widely used across industries. Let's delve a little more into it. As I always say, the real gem is deep inside. Have a look at this picture. Here the horizontal black line represents the unknown population mean mu. Vertical blue lines are the confidence intervals that contain the value of the population mean. And the red line, which is also a confidence interval, is below the black line and hence does not contain the population mean value. So here 19 out of 20 samples from the same population has confidence intervals that contain the population parameter. This is called 95% confidence level. Just like hypothesis tests, confidence intervals can also be one or two-sided. A one-sided confidence interval bounds the population parameter either from above or below, thus giving it an upper or lower bound. A two-sided confidence interval bounds the population parameter from above as well as below. We can determine confidence interval by calculating a point estimate. This value estimates a population parameter by using sample data and by determining its margin of error. Margin of error quantifies the random sampling error and indicates the precision of our estimate. While testing statistical significance, it is always important to have a precise confidence interval. The question here is, how can we have a more precise confidence interval? Well, there are four distinct ways. First is increase the sample size. So more data decreases the margin of error and the interval around the sample statistic becomes narrower, thus giving a more precise estimate of a population parameter. However, keep a note of the trade-off between the improved precision and the higher time, resource, and energy required to collect more data. Remember the cost factor too. Second is reducing variability. Well, reducing variability will decrease the standard deviation, thus impacting the margin of error. To reduce variability, we have to follow different process improvement methodologies or we may also look at improving our measurement system. Thirdly, we can use a one-sided confidence interval because it has a smaller margin of error. However, it indicates only whether a parameter is either less than or greater than a cutoff value. It does not provide any information about the parameter in the opposite direction. Lastly, we can lower the confidence level because a lower confidence level gives us a narrower and more precise confidence interval. However, let's decide on the trade-off between better precision and lesser confidence. What do we need? Well, having said that, I hope that now you have a fair understanding of the confidence interval and confidence level concept, which is one of the most ubiquitous questions floating around in quality groups. So before we sign off, thank you once again for your time to watch this short video. If you have any questions, please feel free to get back to me. Also please do share it in your circles and subscribe to this channel to stay updated on more such videos. Cheers!